What's going on everyone? My name is Cam and I'm a professional colorist and photographer based out of Vancouver, BC. Today I'm going to be taking you guys behind the scenes as I go on a super low budget, in fact zero budget photo shoot with my good friend Anna where we shot this really cool e-bike which was provided by her friends over at Rover e-bikes. Big shout out to them for providing the bike and I'd like to show you guys how I both shoot and edit photos when there's no budget to work with. So come along with me and check out how I did this. It's going to be a fun little adventure, quick little video to start off the YouTube channel and I hope you guys enjoy it. So first off, let me allow Anna to introduce herself and she's going to give us a little rundown of what she does as well as the e-bike that we are shooting today. It's pretty dope. Okay, my name is Anna. I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia. I am a kinesiologist and my company is called Athletics RX. Uh, we've got the Rover e-bike here. It is the sleekest road bike that is also an e-bike that's on the market right now. And it is from a company that's actually based out of Vancouver, British Columbia. So it's pretty cool. It's a local brand. Um, and honestly, I love this thing. All right. Uh, yeah, great, great call. Ah, fuck. What do I even want to say? Do I even need to say anything here? Give me a bit of a break. It's my first time shooting like vlog style stuff. And you know, you can kind of tell. So the idea of what we're going to do today is just take some general photos of Anna with the bike as well as some product shots just in these surroundings because we got a lot of vibrant colors, a lot of greens going on. We're going to head back up to the road in a little bit and also do some rolling shots so we're going to get that nice blurry background with Anna perfectly in focus on the bike. In terms of gear, I was just rocking with my A7R4, this is my personal photography camera. I use this for everything be it portrait, landscape, product, BTS. Everything. This bad boy works wonders. 62 megapixels of sheer insanity. There's just so much depth to these images and so much detail that the sensor is able to capture that you can just bring it all back in post. You know, you can do whatever you want. You want to make these leaves pink? Whatever. Why not? And then in terms of glass, just using my Sigma Art 24 to 70. So we pretty much jumped straight into things and started shooting. So let's, you know, cue a little shooting montage. shots a lot harder than I remembered last time I did it it was nighttime so it was a bit easier to get the exposure settings dialed than in the daylight when you've got a lot more light and when you're dealing with longer exposure times like you need to do for these rolling shots in order to capture the motion blur when it's bright outside you run the risk of blowing things out a lot more so you may be wondering how does one take a rolling photo where you get that nice blurry background like those New York taxi cab shots I'm sure you've seen on Instagram well you basically just got to make your shutter speed super low Crank your f-stop, I'm at f10 right now, kind of ridiculous, and get that ISO as low as it can possibly go. So, you know, your shutter's gonna be open for a while, so you gotta make sure that you're moving pretty smoothly. If you do it right, the subject will come out tack sharp. I would probably rather do these roller shots at night. I think it'd look better and it'd be a lot easier to set the camera up for them. But after taking about 800 of these rolling shots and making Anna go back and forth about 12 times, Then the last thing was just some drone footage, no pictures, just threw the drone up, got some tracking shots, got some top downs. It was more of the same, back and forth like 200 times for Anna. <laughs> Alright, let's go the other way. Sorry Anna. Anyways, so once I had the drone footage, which I used to cut together a little Instagram reel for Anna, which you can view at her Instagram account, we decided to call it a day. So now let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop, where I'm gonna show you all the steps I took to bring these photos to life and give them some banging edits. All right, so we're here in Lightroom, and honestly, when I'm editing in Lightroom, I like to keep things pretty simple. As you can see, I've mainly just done, you know, a little bit of curved work, but honestly, not much at all. Some clarity, then, you know, your basic adjustments here. 
usually don't even touch the color wheels here in Lightroom because I don't really like them. They can be good, but not my favorite way to grade my photos. This is essential, making sure your lens profile is corrected. Uh, if you want to see what it does, it basically does that. And you know, there's the full edit that I ended up going with. Another thing I like to add is a little bit of vignette, which you can see here. This helps draw the eye to the center. This one's a little harsh, so I might feather it out a touch. So down here is one of my favorite features in Lightroom. It's the uh, calibration section at the very bottom when you scroll down. And in particular, the blue primary slider. This bad boy is insane. So, you know, if we wanted to go here, this would definitely be pretty sweet. I like to have those greens doing a little bit more of the talking, so I'd probably want to leave it right around there. So that would be pretty much everything I do in Lightroom. You know, maybe dial that crop in a touch more. I'd probably leave it somewhere around here. I like how this looks. So at this point, I'm done with Lightroom and I'll move into Photoshop to do the more fine-tune edits to my photos. So, Command E, oops, whatever. All right, so now we're in Photoshop and step number one, duplicate the image. Because what this will do is if I screw something up, I've always got a clean, unedited version of what I started with coming from Lightroom, so I can always go back to that if need be. So the second step, I usually like to go and add a gradient map. I think for this particular picture, maybe something along these lines. One technique that I find works great with these gradient maps is to use a gradient that graduates from a dark shade of the same hue into a lighter shade of the same hue. So as you can see, I've got one that's almost white here on the right side of the screen, and then on the left side of the gradient, I have one that's a lot darker. So we're gonna hit okay, bing, and bang. So when you've done that, your picture's gonna look like this. So it's like trash, don't worry about it. We gotta go to our blending modes, which again, blending modes are amazing. They're great in color grading, they're great in photo editing, they're just amazing all around. And they can really spice up your looks, so always use them, especially with things like gradient maps and color fills, things like that. Absolutely crucial, crucial tool to use in my opinion. It's like the sauce on top, you know what I'm saying? Correct the skin, looks pretty good. Realistically, there's tons of ways to do a local adjustment, particularly when it comes to exposure and contrast, which is what I'm doing here. And what I'm trying to do is isolate that screen. I think that works pretty well. And you'll just wanna, you know, take a minute to refine those edges, make sure everything's cool. So now the display pops, awesome. Another tactic which is probably frowned upon, but it does some good stuff, is to just take your brush tool and just, you know, this is where the blending modes come back, they are crucial, and just darken things down like that in the areas which aren't as important, which the viewer doesn't need to be paying attention to. Sometimes I like to throw in a little color balance, not too much, nothing too crazy, and then before and after, it really didn't do much. There's not meant to. One last little technique that I also like to implement when it comes to skin tones, sample the color, figure out what color the skin tone is, and just draw, hit that blending mode again, put a little mask on. So if any of the brush was sort of going over where you'd want it to go, you can just go and remove all that. So now I know that the brush strokes which I put over the arms here are now clean. So for a little recap, this is what we started off with. Lightroom took us here, and after Photoshop, it looks like this. So as you can see, Photoshop is a big part of my photo editing process, and I do think that, for my workflow at least, it is absolutely essential to use some of the tools and capabilities that Photoshop has. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Now the photo's done, from here I just export it as a high quality JPEG or whatever the client wants, and boom, out the door. We are done -zo. that's a wrap. All right, well, that about does it for today's video. Please let me know if you enjoyed it. I had a great time shooting it. I'm looking forward to doing some more videos in the very near future. Next time, I'm gonna be bringing you guys along as I take some more product shots of these, a bunch of camera bags and accessories that were sent to me by my friends over at Think Tank Photo. Thank you very much for those. So I'm looking forward to doing a pretty cool photographer-themed photo shoot. It's gonna be pretty wild. I hope to see you guys there. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I will see you guys all in the next video.